Alphabet, the study is based on the Book of Mark, and it goes through the foundations of Christianity. So if you have any questions, anything that's kind of in your mind that you just need to ask, it's a good place to go, okay? Um, there's a little book, like a guide that you follow along with, so it's it's good for people who need that. So it's not just a normal Bible study where you sit and listen, it's more discussion. So if you'd like that, it's good for everyone, bring your family, bring your friends, it's a great time. So that starts January 10th, Monday night, 7 o'clock. Men's breakfast. Who is a man in here? Do we have any men? Because real men love Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Men's breakfast. Saturday, January 15th, 8.30 a.m. at Wimby's. So if you want to hang out with men and become more like Jesus, be there. Okay? Donations. Today is the last day to give money to the fellowship, a.k.a. to God. Uh, to get a tax receipt for 2021. So if you need a tax receipt for this year, make sure you give by the end of today. And there's a little box in the back. You can do that. And that is all. Is everyone good? Okay. Ready for worship? Okay, let's pray. You guys can stand up and pray. Thank you, God, so much for, for this Christmas season. Thank you that you sent Jesus as a baby, to be fully man, so he could take our place, he could pay the price that we should have paid. And thank you, God, that you loved us so much that you did that for us. We pray that you would help us to always uh, put you first in our lives, that we would always remember that you're the only one who's faithful, who's reliable, who's uh, always there for us, who loves us and knows us more than anyone ever could. We thank you, God, that you are that for us. Pray that as we worship you tonight, that our hearts and our minds be fixed and focused on you. That we would we would just fall more in love with you. And as we sing these songs, help the words to to speak to us. That we would uh, focus on who you are and your great character. We love you so much, God. We praise you. You are worthy. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 It's so good to be together. We're going to sing one last Christmas song of the year. We must. It's, it's still kind of Christmas, right? We had our family angel die Christmas today, and it was, it was really beautiful. Peace has come.
look to you, O oh God. And we want to live the way you've called us to live. We want to be in your presence as we praise you, as we pray and be in your word every day. Lord God, we want to be your hands and feet in this world. We want to be so filled up with your power, the power of the Holy Spirit, and so filled up with your love and grace as we remember all you've done for us, Lord God, that we wouldn't be able to help telling everyone we need about you. Yeah. And Lord Jesus, we, we ask God that as this year comes to a close and the new year begins, Lord, that you would do a work, a new work in our hearts, Lord yes, Jesus, Lord. in our lives, yes. that we would, we would not um, hide behind things that we've done in the past or experiences we've had in the past, but we would press on toward the goal, yeah. Lord, that we would become more like you, Lord Jesus, and that we would live in such a way that you're coming back any second. And, and God, we just lift her praise to you, Jesus, because none of it is possible without you. Our salvation is in you. Our, our growth is in you. Our future, our eternity is secure because of all that you have done. So help us to live in your strength and in the power of your word, Lord God. And we give you all the praise this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You need to see it. Good evening. Hi. Can you hear me? Am I on? Oh, I got a mask on. Hello. Hey. There we are. Yeah, it's becoming habit. Well. Y'all have a good afternoon nap? Good stuff, yeah. Good, three of you. Excellent. Me too. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Good to see you all here tonight. It's a, it's a funny thing at, uh, at the, the weekend of Christmas. You um, you don't know, are you going to have a lot of people because of extra visitors, or are you going to have nobody because of uh, Boxing Day? And um, you don't know which way it's going to go, but. Uh, I know I was listening to Colin this morning, Pastor Colin, when he was speaking, and he, uh, he talked about when he was a kid, and, and when he was a kid, I was too, and, uh, and uh, you know, all the stores were closed on Sunday, and I remember when they stopped that, my, my dad was so upset, and he'd go to all the plazas, and he'd put brochures in everybody's window, and it was like another useless protest, uh, and, and, uh, but it meant so much to him and uh, now that I'm born again, I understand why it means so much. I mean, it, it's, it, there's so much temptation in the world, and now they, now they tempt us with, should I go shopping or should I go to church? And it never used to be an option. It used to be church, and that was it. Well, you could go to the restaurant after. My dad was against that, too, for a long time. It was like, you can't make those people work on Sunday because then they can't go to church. But they were working anyway, so we started going to the restaurant. See how you slip into the world so easy, eh? And now I'm the master of the restaurants. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you all here tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We love to be together. We love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. What a great time. Father, we sing that song, Majesty. Worship his majesty. Oh God, sometimes we don't treat you like a king. We don't treat you like his majesty. And we should. We should always do that. Jesus who died, now glorified, king of all kings. Praise your name forever. Thank you, Lord. Be with those who couldn't be here today. All those who are watching on the YouTube or the the live stream, people who are hurting, people who are suffering, people who are sick. In Jesus' name I pray, touch them, Lord, touch them. More than anything, heal them spiritually. So many people are hurting. 
So many people are lost. So many people are confused. It's no wonder we have so much mental illness nowadays. This world is not like it's supposed to be. We weren't created for all of this corruption. It gets overwhelming. Be with us, Lord. Help us to make it through this. We look so forward to your return. And you come and you make this all right. Make it the way it's supposed to be. No more sin, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more death. Oh God, we look forward to that time. When you come back in your majesty. We give you praise and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, tonight we're going to do something really strange. Oh, what's new? You no, know, tonight we're going, to, um, we're going to be looking at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Because Isaiah is amazing. It's an amazing book. And by the way, all you people that are starting to turn off your YouTube and your, because I called it Isaiah, I'm right and you're wrong, so don't turn it off. Aya, Aya is the name of God. If you study Hebrew, you'll see Jeremiah, Hezekiah. It, and it's funny, we're okay saying those names, but then we get to Isaiah, and all of a sudden we want to Anglo-Saxonize it. Isaiah is the proper term, otherwise you're taking God out of his name. But Isaiah, written, written 700 years before Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Now think about that. 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah is prophesying perfectly about the Christ, about Jesus, and about what he'll suffer, what he'll go through, and about what he'll do for us. That book blows my mind. It blows my mind that a, a prophet can can prophesy so perfectly so many years before Jesus. It's, it's a fantastic book to read. And, and so tonight we're going to look at that because we're kind of still in Christmas. As long as these people leave up these lights, we'll do the Christmas thing. Okay? <laughs> so here we are. And, and, and because we sang majesty, we'll look at Isaiah 6, 1 to 3 first, okay? So this is Isaiah. He has a vision he has a vision of the Christ. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. He was high and lifted up, and his robe, his, his train, it, it filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each of these seraphim had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another, and they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And so after, after Isaiah says this, he then announces that God will come to earth and be born of a virgin woman. Look, Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And then look at 9.6, Isaiah 9.6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then Isaiah tells us how this, this Jesus that's going to be born is going to be sinless. Isaiah 53, 9. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. Remember, they, they buried Jesus in a rich man's tomb, in Lazarus' tomb. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, he hadn't sinned. And then Isaiah tells us that he'll do great wonders and, and, and great healings. Isaiah 35, 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And then we get into the, 
that passage that we read about Jesus' suffering, Isaiah 53. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, talking about Jesus, and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. There was nothing attractive about Jesus. People didn't follow him because somehow they were attracted to him. There was no beauty that we should desire him. That's interesting. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed spiritually. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that's led to slaughter, and like sheep before their shears, he was silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and the rich man. And in his death, the rich man's grave, although he had done no violence, there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. That's, that's very perplexing. It, it was God the Father's will that Jesus was crushed. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. That, that's a very important passage. My servant, Jesus, he'll make many be accounted righteous. We will be accounted righteous. We will be counted as righteous because of what Christ did on the cross. And he shall bear their iniquities. He will, he will bear the sin of the world. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many. And he makes intercession for the sinners. There is no passage in the Bible that is so filled with the plan of God, and, and God's plan of, of substitutionary atonement. That's, that's that he, Jesus died in our place. He was a substitute for us. We needed to die, but Jesus died in our place. It is especially clear in Isaiah 53, 4 to 6. Yeah, Isaiah has told the world that for, and he's told the world for all time. It doesn't change. The, by the, the, the sinners have rebelled against God. We rebelled against Jesus. And Jesus is going to take our rebellion, our sin upon himself. So that we don't have to. This is amazing stuff, man. This is freedom in Christ. We're free because of what Christ did for us. But look what Paul says. He's quoting, he's quoting from Isaiah in Romans 10, 16 to 17. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. And then Paul says in Romans 3, 28, For we would hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. 
This is the good news. This is what it's all about. And, and it is the only hope that we sinners have of salvation. It's through Christ and Him alone. We have no other hope. No chapter in the entire Bible so clearly tells us why Jesus has died for us and how He died as an innocent slaughter. God's plan was laid out to save us from our sin. Isaiah 111 says, what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices? This is, God is asking the people, you do all these sacrifices, what for? What do they mean to me? I've had enough of your burnt offerings. I've had enough of your fat and your well-fed beasts. I don't delight in the blood of bulls or lambs or goats. God's saying he's sick of religion. He's sick of religion. He's sick of people going to church on Sundays and singing songs. Just, just spewing out stuff to God that really doesn't come from their heart. He's sick of that. He doesn't want you to sacrifice anything for him except yourself. Look at Isaiah 30, 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust you shall find your strength. But you were unwilling. Returning and rest is repenting. Returning from, from your lifestyle to the lifestyle you should be in, the one that God had promised for you, the one that God had made you for. It's repenting. Rest is what we find in God. It's only through this returning to God and once again putting our faith in Him that we can be saved by Him. Saved from eternal destruction onto eternal life. Isaiah 57, 15 says this. For thus says the one who is high and lifted up. Remember who that is from the beginning? Jesus, high and lifted up. Who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. This is what he says. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who has a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. If you know you're a sinner, and you turn to God, he listens to you. He esteems you. He, he, wants, to, he wants to reconcile with you. Isaiah tells us that God doesn't just live in heaven, but he lives in the hearts of everyone who will put their faith in him. He lives in our lives. He dwells within man. Isaiah again reminds us that we cannot earn this salvation because we're fallen and we need a rescuer. Look at Isaiah 64, 6. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. We're, we're, we're all polluted. We're all unrighteous. We're like a filthy rag, a, a polluted garment. We're like a leaf, and our, our sins are like the wind. They take us away. Our sins carry us away from God. So the Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. Because we we're all sinners, we all deserve to die. You know, as a fellowship, we have to stay focused on this gospel message. Mm -hmm. And it's in the Bible. It's all the way through the Bible. It doesn't just start in John 3.16. It starts in Genesis. We've got to remember, God had a plan from the very beginning to save us. Mm -hmm. and we've got to keep that central in our lives. The good news about Jesus Christ. We've got to hang on to that. We just read, we just read an article where it said that 3% of all North and 5%, sorry, 5% of all uh, evangelical churches in, in North America, only 5% of them have anybody in their congregations that share the good news about Jesus Christ. 5%. You know how many churches there are in North America? Only 5% are out there sharing their faith, sharing the good news about Jesus Christ. And if the good news is what
what saves us, if the good news is what gives us hope and takes us out of confusion, if the good news is that, we got to share it. We have to share it with others. I was just reading Isaiah. This is a personal devotional thing. I'm, I'm supposed to be doing Galatians, right? But I was reading through Isaiah and going, like, this is such a beautiful book. It's all about Jesus Christ. I wanted to share that with you tonight. I, I, I hope you're not mad at me for not doing Galatians, but man, I know it was short, but it's sweet. It's sweet. Remember the good news about Jesus Christ and share it with people. This weekend, we should have been filled with visitors. We had every opportunity to fill this place with visitors. We didn't do that. We got it. Share the good news. People are dying. They're suffering. They're in so much pain. There's so little hope. There's so much fear. Please feel sorry for them. Feel the compassion. Reach out to them. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the plan that you have. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that we can have hope. We can have eternal blessing, peace, love, joy. Oh, God, you've promised it to us through putting our trust, our faith, our hope in Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that that, that, just, that just sticks in our head and we can't get rid of it. We just need to share it with other people. How, how selfish are we? To know the good news and not share it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for Isaiah. And for the wonderful prophecies that he gave to us. Thank you that they were all answered perfectly. Oh, God, we thank you. You're such a great God. We give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.